can you paint with a limited palette? Sure, we can do some demos. We can make some thumbnail sketches, maybe some color studies, but can you paint, paint what you crave to paint using a limited palette? And so for a little extra bonus here, I wanted to dive into this concept and just show you my techniques painting in a limited palette successfully. I have an old piece of paper here that had some color on it. It's got some gesso layers. I love reusing old pages. It just kind of gives you a start so that you're not starting with a white page. Um, and then I like to get in here with my water soluble graphite pencil here. I dip it in water and I kind of just see what marks I want to make. And it doesn't matter if you're starting on a plain paper, if you can use watercolor. My favorite is Stonehenge. Uh, this is probably from a pad of paper from something cheap at Michael's. I'm just making some marks to kind of get an idea of composition. And it's going to leave some interesting layers. Remember, variation is our key. So I've got a little start here. And I'm going to come in with some of these colors and kind of practice what I preach here on creating something dramatic. So I'm doing a floral. This is one of my favorite things. And you've probably seen it many times on my social media feed or in some of my classes. But they're becoming more and more abstract. And you really have to... Pay attention to composition in this case. And I'm playing around with these different kinds of shapes and colors. I'm gonna come in here too with some neutral blue. It's a little different from what I usually do in my color combinations. I like to start messy. If there's one thing that I've finally learned and accept about myself is that I really love action in my work. My work is not calm, as you've noticed most of the time, it's full of life and action. and um, so I'm just kind of playing with those concepts, all these messy colors that are left here and kind of seeing what I can do and leaving some of the colors to peek through from behind. I really like what's happening. It's different, let's be honest. And here's the thing though, we're definitely gonna wanna allow some of these layers to dry before we go to add in any more. And I'm just playing right now and I don't know how much of what's underneath is gonna show when we're done. I'm just getting some of these colors. So assume that we started fresh and hadn't just used this to mix up those color studies. All you would need to do is make a few little mixes of colors that are interesting to you. Mix up a little bit of the green and mix up a little bit of the blue and see what you can do to start creating action and drama. And in this case, what I'm trying to do is just get this color on and make something different. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to make florals out of that. I want some of this showing through. So what I do is I make sure my brush is wet and I just kind of blend it out. If you're working fast, it's a little easier. If you're a slow painter, you're gonna to need to reactivate by adding more layers of paint. So that's the key for making things look really blended and smooth with acrylic paints is working fast. It's gonna be fun to get that green. That was one of the things that was really interesting to me about this color combination was this really great olive green. And this is looking so messy right now. You're like, okay, I'm not impressed. Guess what? Let it dry and then let's come back for more layers. We've got dry layers now and I'm gonna do something a little unexpected, which is the best way to work out your composition. I'm flipping it, all right? I really like the way these colors kind of show up here on top and this is kind of dark and moody here, but we're still gonna play with this. I've gotta bring a lot of light into it. Remember we have these gorgeous purple colors I want to bring that purple and pink back into this piece. And of course, my favorite coral. Um, so I'm going to start by mixing up a little bit of this nice corally kind of color here. And I'm going to add light because I don't want it to be too dark. And let's see what happens if we kind of get ourselves some abstract florals happening. And they're going to be mixing with that graphite that we had in here. So don't be surprised if that kind of changes the colors just a bit. I want that blue bit to kind of show through. We've got quite some drama. I'm not deciding what kind of flowers these are at this moment. What I am doing though is I'm playing with composition and design and I'm looking at how it works in the whole piece. Maybe some of them are here. This is like probably out in the rose garden, not in a vase. <laughs> and I'm going to pull in some of those purples now because I think that's going to be really interesting. But in order to do that, we do want to bring in some white mixed with that. There we go maybe different shapes. Remember, variation is key, and we're still taking that into consideration as we paint. 
and I'm making a mess, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to go back and forth and kind of see what colors come from my brush. We need a lot of white, though. So one of the mistakes that artists make is it ends up mid-tone range because they're not adding enough white into what they're doing. All right, these little pretty peach things. Looks like they're kind of all looking this way, huh? No problem. I like that. It's got its own little character. I'm making mud. There might come a point where it's feeling a little too muddy. I love the desaturated colors because as we've talked about with desaturation, we have a chance to make uh, more muted colors and then the other colors will pop. But sometimes it gets to be too much. So I'm playing. I'm going to see what happens here. And then it might be time to wash my brush and start fresh again. Look at that's a pretty color. They're probably roses. If I'm going to be honest with you, most of my flowers have been looking like roses these days. I'm kind of inspired by roses. Okay, I've flipped my palette around here so I can get some clean colors. And as you can see, once you start adding in clean colors, it just kind of makes those muddy colors make the clean colors pop. That's what I was talking about, the balance of the chroma. So learning how to make mud is actually to your advantage, right? Um, I noticed one problem here though. Variation is key. We have a lot going on and maybe it's a little too chaotic. It's, there's no focal point, but what we also have is a nice row of similar size shapes happening here. So I'm going to need to push the envelope a little bit. I'm going to come in here with this. It's going to be bright and really dramatic, but how about if this one is just a little bit bigger? I get a little bit of light happening. Now that's changing it just a bit. I like that. I want to play around with this color here. More white. I want to bring in light because we have these dark lines and I love the dark lines around the flowers. I'm going to bring in a little bit more light here and I'm going to keep playing with it a bit until I start to see something kind of uniform happening. Remember, we started with an, a, a painting that had already begun, so whatever is happening now is kind of intuitive to see how we can pull it together. And I'm going to need to bring green in, no doubt about that, and then certainly some, let's put a little white in there, a chance to bring this line a little bit out. So we need some intuitive marks. And this is where we might take a look and say, do we need to switch it again? Maybe we do. That looks interesting. I'm going to come in here and kind of change that. I need a darkish. I make it a little muddy, but I want this really dark purpley red to kind of go underneath. There we go. I'm going to let that area dry because we're getting messy, but we've kind of changed the composition again. And you can keep looking at your piece as you go. And when you're working on your composition, whether it's floral or abstract or anything else, keep all of these little details and tricks in mind. You're really just building up layers. And we're only using three colors. We're really only using three colors, and that's pretty impressive. All right, I want that to dry. I think I want this area over here. Let's find a different brush this area over here to have a little more of the yellow to contrast. So our dominant focus here, even though we've got the blues underneath, our dominant focus is this, obviously these reds. I'm going to come over here with this one and add white to it. Maybe a little more red. There we go. That's kind of interesting. I'm trying to keep it fresh and not overworked. It's hard to do because this is really abstract. This is just like play. I've come back in to add some dark here, and I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to add another layer on top of it. Same with up here. And so what I really want to do is come back in and bring in the green now. I'm going to mix some green color here. That's really dark. It's probably darker than I want it to be, so I'm going to add in more yellow. Always more yellow if you want it to, to stay green. And then we can come in here and start seeing what happens with our different variations and give it kind of some, for lack of a better description, we're working on getting our foliage in there. And though I want to keep it really light, I don't want to overwork this. 
but I think it's just what it needs. The complementary of the red with the green, that's really your, that's when you're getting into your zone of, of perfect complements. I want that corner really dark. I think that's what's happening is that it needs, there we go. That's what I wanted. It's almost as if we're peering up into the garden, this little secret garden. I'm gonna add more water and kind of blend this. Why haven't I filled the whole thing in? Well, that is definitely an option if that's something that you're interested in doing, but I like kind of giving it like alternative composition for a matter, better way of saying it. It's, it's creating like this dynamic one third is less. There's not a lot of action going on. And this two thirds has a lot more action. That's a better composition than when you fill the whole page up. And that's kind of why I've chosen to do it this way. However, I have seen it with great success filling up the entire page. Just learn those rules, folks, before you go and break the rules. That's all I'm saying. I love how that blue is still peeking through right there. What do you think? And this is starting to dry. My final touch for something like this is always going to end up being oil pastel or the woodies or some sort of mark making tool. We get we end up getting these really great contrasts. But before we get there, I'm going to take a smaller brush and some white and pink and see if we can't get some like almost electric color going on here. And spin that brush. It does not have to be perfect. So see how we're changing the dynamic of this? It was feeling kind of dull and lifeless because we have all that muted color, but now this, whatever's happening, is starting to get more interesting. Don't let all of your marks be the same though. You know, that's a big challenge is to go from one brush to another and then wanting all of the whole page to have all the same look. You don't want that. We want a few lines in a few places and maybe something to read different in different corners. See? Little marks, large marks. Switching up your brush makes a difference there. Even this. There we go. Look at that just changed everything and I love it. Because we're not trying to make an exact petal. Though you might be, but I'm certainly not. There we go, that mark there. See this flat versus round? We're getting different looks. This needs a lot more something. Maybe not quite that. There we go. See, I feel like that might be taking our eye a little too far off, so let's kind of bring it together. There we go. It's just little tricks like where do your where does your eye get stuck? Is it taking you right off? Is it drawing too much attention somewhere? And that's what we're trying to avoid. Another thing, take advantage of the other side of your brush. I'm pretty happy with the way this composition's turned out because we have a dominant focal floral here. We have a nice flow for the rest of them. We have different marks. We have different colors where our dominant color is this pinkish reddish color. Our subdominant color is the green and then pops of yellow. And well, this little hint of blue poking through, it does not enough to distract us. Now, if we had an even amount of the blue, then it's going to get too chaotic. So when we're talking about proportion of color, this one works really well. When we talk about uh, saturated versus desaturated, that minding the chroma. We've limited our palette, but I will tell you, I'd love to push and pull the value just a little more. We have some darks and we have some lights, but we have a lot of mid-tone ranges. And the way I like to kind of fix that right at the end to make things pop is sometimes I come in with my oil pastels and then we get some interesting marks coming and unexpected lines. It gives it a whole different line of texture. Uh, I can use the hot pinks and whites, a little bit of white to kind of bring some light through, poking through the foliage or whatever this is, you know, like I said, we're not really defining it too much, but this really kind of changes it a little bit. And that's fun for me to be able to see how pastels and other mark making tools can change the look of something, maybe give a little bit of line work, and that gives us more variation. 
I still want to mind not overdoing it because if you overdo any one element to make it even, you're going to end up making it boring. I love this. This is really great. What happens if I bring a little bit of that lavenderish lilac color into the green? The complement is gorgeous and it's kind of tying it all together. And this is how you'll see a lot of my florals when they all come together. They have just enough element to say, hey, oh, for sure that's a flower. What kind, we're not quite sure. It's not really important. But the pops of pure color come from the oil pastels most often. And they kind of become kind of my go-to. Can't go without. Now look, I'm making it too even. I've got a little here, a little here, a little there. We don't want to do that. We definitely want to keep it from being too even because even is boring. There we go. Now our eye can move around without it being caught anywhere. I've gotten a different color green to just kind of pull some of the olive color in. How do you know when you're done? It's good to step back and take a look. A lot of times I like to just take a photograph and wait until the next day and look at it flat on my screen maybe before I'm follow, falling asleep at night. Um, those little tricks are how you can tell. Is it done? Is it not done? But change it in the black and white. Look at it in the mirror. Really take a break. The best thing you can do is just take a break from your work because your work is probably, you're too close to it. You've been staring at it and working at it and you're not sure if it's the right thing or not. And you can get carried away really fast, like I am right now. I just want a little pop here and a little pop there and then it's going to get too messy and too too much overdone, overworked. And I really like it when it's at this stage right now where I haven't done too much. Maybe it needs a, a little freckle or two and then we can say, I'm done. I'm going to stop right there. If maybe tomorrow morning I feel different, I might add something. But I'm going to say I'm done and I hope you've learned something from this limited palette, knowing your colors, balancing the chroma, knowing your values, understanding that color has value, and of course, proportion. So we've hit all five, and then my main point is variation is key, and we have that as well. I hope this has been super valuable for you. If you love it, stay on my mailing list, keep in touch with me, buy my book, and I'll see you in the next course, okay? Thank you so much, artists. Now go make more art.